Hi everybody, I'm uh, Darth Ford, and I got a special video here today uh, where I got some guests, uh, some friends of mine who have a uh, great understanding and thoughts on Star Wars, and uh, I'm bringing them here today because I realized uh, after talking with them that uh, while we all love Star Wars, we have differing opinions on what we appreciate from Star Wars, and I thought that was kind of interesting and kind of cool. So yeah, so I brought them in and uh, asked them to rate all 10 Star Wars movies one being their favorite, ten being their least favorite, and uh, today we're going to discuss our bottom tier. So that would be the our bottom five of that top ten. And so just to be clear, what we're talking about are the eight episodic movies, so episodes one through eight, uh, along with the two Star Wars story movies. Uh, so we're not talking about the Clone Wars movie. We're not talking about the Ewok movie. We've only are rating the eight episodic movies and the two Star Wars story movies. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guests here, and uh, they're going to just introduce themselves, and then just kind of explain the criteria of how they develop their lists. Darth Ford, thanks for having me on your channel. I'm Spaceman Ricky. I have a passion for Star Wars Legends. My favorite character is Admiral Dalla. A lot of people probably don't know who that is, but uh, Jedi Search, great, uh, great book. And yeah, I'm really excited to talk about the movies today. Uh, I'm just going to throw this out there. I love them all. I love the prequels. I've got nothing against any Star Wars movie, um, so it was really hard for me to make this ranking today. But uh, to kind of put it in perspective, I'm going to uh, to base it off three things that I think for me are the three things that speak to me about Star Wars, three, okay. the three uh, criterion I love. And to put it simply, it's I view Star Wars as a Western space opera. Mm. <laughs> uh, and that's not a term, uh, that's not a descriptor that's original to me. Other people have used that over the years, but I really appreciate that. So when I looked at Western, space, and opera, I kind of thought about these things. The Western part of, of Star Wars. I love the nitty gritty. Hmm. I love the imperfect world. I and, and most importantly, something you see in a lot of great Western classic films is there's always an obvious clash between good and evil. Hmm. Though the characters are always flawed and imperfect, and most everyone has some sort of dirty background, it always comes down to a clash between like a good good and an evil evil. It's very clean cut in the end. And that's what I love about Westerns and that's what I love about Star Wars. Okay. Uh, I think the very obvious good and evil. So a space, I love the open, huge universe that is Star Wars. I love that we can't understand it all. I love that we don't know all the planets, all the peoples. And, and you couldn't possibly hope to. And I think that even though we just, in the movies, get to see small actions, it's just a piece of the galaxy, I think Star Wars does a great job conveying that there is so much more than just what's going on. And so one thing I look for in Star Wars movies is that space aspect. And then opera. And I kind of take this two ways. So the Germans had a word, and it was Gesundkunstwerk. And that's, a, that's a, a, one of those classic German combo words. It basically means complete art form. Hmm. So the Germans thought that all opera should be a great uh, blend of the visually and aurally impressive things in their culture. And so I think what Star Wars has done a great job of is always pushing what you could visually depict and, on, on a screen and just the great sound effects and music and how they're met, you know, really wed together. You can't have Star Wars without its iconic score and without the sound effects that we've come to know and love. So, so that's something I look for in the opera category, but also the fact that operas traditionally were a small group of characters. It was very hard to cast an opera back, you know, in the dark ages or whatever. So most operas are written for a very small cast of characters, but they always have a huge impact on their world around them. Hmm. even in their tiny interactions. So what I love about Star Wars, and specifically the, the Skywalker saga, is that it's a small, tiny, related cast of characters that make a galactic impact. Hmm. And, and so that is a characteristic of opera, and it's a characteristic that I look for when thinking about the different movies in the, in the Star Wars saga. So for me, I'm looking at the Western nature, the nitty-gritty, space, and the, and the openness, and then the the opera, the visually orally impressive, along with a small cast of characters making a big impact. Hmm. So that's me, and I'm excited to 
talk about these movies. All right, yeah, that's that's a really interesting uh, criteria. I never hadn't really thought about it in those terms before. So I definitely look forward to seeing how how your movies rate using that uh, criteria. All right, and for our other guest. Yes. Hi everybody, I am Fulcrum and I am super excited to be jumping on to Darth Ford's channel having watched some of his videos and knowing his breakdown style and how much he just really appreciates and loves and knows Star Wars. I am a huge fan of everything canon and non-canon, Disney, post-Disney, pre-Disney, all of it, <laughs> but I do also have a big love for Legends and going back far. Uh, my favorite Star Wars character actually crossed over from Legends to Canon and is Admiral Thrawn, mm. Grand Admiral Thrawn now. Mm. So definitely enjoyed seeing him in a little bit of Rebels. My system for rating is a lot less exact than what Spaceman Ricky just laid out or what Darth Ford has done on all of his previous reviews. Mine is more a love for the movies, a love for the shows and a love for the Star Wars storyline overall. So which movie either was the most entertaining, most enveloping, most stole you away into that world? And also which one, which characters or which storyline captures you and really holds you together? So less exact, but more comprehensive, maybe. Hmm. Great, great. Real whole picture for you. Yes. All right. That's awesome. Very good. Well, again, uh, well, I appreciate uh, both of you. Uh, doing this video with me. Uh, so this is a first for the Darth War channel of having a special guest on. So look forward to see how this goes. Um, and this is also the first uh, where we're completely unscripted, right? We have yes. no idea what, how each other rated these uh, movies. Some of us finished our lists like two minutes ago. So. Yeah. Um, so, so there we go. We're, we're just kind of, uh, Flying off of the seat of our pants, is that the phrase? <laughs> that's, that's a good phrase, yeah. We're right. really just going for it today, and you, the, you, the viewer, will be learning alongside of us. Uh, all right. That's exciting. So we'll see how this goes. So, yeah, so um, as you all know, so I am Darth Ford. Uh, my favorite character, you know, you guys kind of threw that out there, and I hadn't even thought about, about that part. <laughs> um, my favorite character is probably, oh, no, it is. It's Darth Vader. <laughs> I know it's, that's like the iconic, almost cliche one, but that for me is is my draw. Um, I love his story arc from Anakin to Darth Vader, the whole, the fall and the redemption of his character. Um, and I feel like I, I could just relate a lot uh, to him, not in the sense that I've like gone evil and We would whatnot, hope not. But, um, but, but just a lot of, I don't know, I, I, I always felt in some way I, I was able to relate to him. Um, I guess that's kind of weird saying that, huh? <laughs> but anyway, and so my rubric on how my criteria, how I graded the movies and, and ranked them. You've got to seen it if you've seen my previous reviews. I use a basis of where I look at their acting. I look at the directing. When I'm talking about directing, I'm talking about you know the cinematography, the choreography, just the particular camera shots and stuff like that. Um, just how the director takes the script and makes it into an art. Uh, so that's what I kind of look at with, with uh, directing. Uh, with screenplay, that's my next category. Um, so I'm looking with screenplay, the story itself. Um, how it unfolds, the pacing of the story, but I'm also looking at the dialogue when I'm rating this the screenplay. Uh, the music, um, as you mentioned, I mean, there, you don't have Star Wars without the music, and John Williams Absolutely. in particular, yeah, John Williams in particular made um, made Star Wars what it was through his score. Uh, so that's one thing I'm always looking at is the Star Wars soundtrack, um, even the ones that aren't by John Williams, you know, the two Star Wars movies, uh, the two Star Wars story movies. Um, neither of them are by John Williams, um, but I still really look at the music to see how that impacts uh, the story. And then my last category is kind of more subjective in a sense, where I just categorize as Star Wars magic. It's kind of hard to describe what I mean by that, but it's just, does it feel like Star Wars? Does it seem like Star Wars to me? All right, so that being said, what we're going to do now is we're going to determine who's going to speak first on what their bottom tiers our top five least favorite and we're building <laughs> we're building up to our least favorite so we're starting at number five all right so fulcrum so looks like i go first okay so my number five this one actually caused me a lot of hemming and hawing and trying to figure out and going back and forth and back and forth but i'm going with solo as my number five so I really didn't want to put this one in the bottom. It was a hard, a hard choice to get it down there. I mean, when we go through our top five, hopefully you'll see why it ended up there. But this one to me, it just, 
for being a Star Wars story and not being one of the main episodes, it captured the world. It was fun. It was entertaining. It was exciting. And it was world building. I mean, it built up these characters that you've come to know and love. It gave them a story. It gave them ground. But it wasn't just a constant, okay, we're going to watch him go do this. And we're going to watch him go do this. It was fascinating. It was fun. You never, you didn't want to walk out of the theater. It was like, please keep going. I want to see more. So, and it had a lot of those great Star Wars moments, like the Kessel Run. Everyone wants to know what that looks like. And now we have that great visual picture of here's the Kessel Run. And yeah, maybe he made it technically in 13, but only until it's 12 when you round down. There you go. That's right. So, yeah. That was my favorite. Okay. So that's your, your top of the bottom top tier. Top of the bottom tier. It's okay. hard to put it in there, but that's that's where it belongs, I think. Okay. Me. All right. Well, I'm actually in agreement with you. That, that was my top there of the bottom go. tier as well. So I'll, when, when it's my turn to talk, I'll, I'll talk about why I put it there. Um, but yeah, I think I agreed with a lot of what you said there. Do you have any particular input on her comments? Um, not really. That one's actually coming up for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if that, I think... Uh, I'd just be curious to see more about why you put it there. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll go ahead and go. All right. So, as I said, uh, so Solo, the Star Wars story, is my number five in this list as well. Uh, so, just looking at my rubric here for acting, um, I gave it a 90. So, I scored all these with a percentage. I gave it a 90. Um, I thought, for the most part, all the acting was pretty well done. Um, I really appreciate it, particularly... Uh, Donald Glover, who played Lando, I thought that was, was spot on. So good. So good. So yeah. It was like watching it. the original. Yeah. You know, especially when you were first introduced to him and you like, you start to hear his voice. He's not quite on camera yet. And yes. you start to hear his voice. Like, it's like, is that Billy D. Williams? Did they just take a recording from Billy D. Williams? It was incredibly, yeah. incredibly well done. Um, I know some people kind of critique that, saying he was just doing an impersonation, whereas the person who played Han is actually like was trying to make it his own Mm -hmm. where this guy was just trying to impersonate Mm -hmm. i didn't get that i like how he did lando i thought he was probably the best part of the movie i also think lando is a larger than life kind of character so there's not a lot of ways you can play him without it feeling cheesy Mm -hmm. or overdone this Mm -hmm. was like that well well done balance yeah i actually thought he played a a more immature lando and i thought Mm -hmm. that fit perfectly in into the next time we see lando Mm -hmm. You know, yes. He's had some more mistakes, and he's also got a little more responsibility and weight on his shoulders. Yeah, and yeah, so, especially by Empire. Yeah, yeah. So I actually thought the that what might seem to some as being impersonating to me that came across as just like a, a character who's a little more immature, which mm-hmm. is great. Right. Mm-hmm. I thought that was perfect. All right. So yeah, uh, my, my I say my only uh, the reason why Solo didn't get a hundred, and I can't for the life of me remember his name, uh, but the guy who plays on. Um, there, there are moments where, where I feel like he gets Han right. And Han, is, like, I was, I was talking to my brother the other day about this. Like, out of all the characters, the probably the one that I'm going to be most critical about is Han. Mm-hmm. That's true. Right? Because Luke, you know, Mark Hamill plays Luke in a fairly generic way. You could almost anyone could play Luke the way Mark Hamill plays yeah. Luke. Not, not, not to bag on Luke or Mark Hamill. But, but, but Harrison Ford, there's a very uniqueness that he brought to the character. Um, that, well, because he, Han Solo is not a black and white character. He's mm-hmm. a very multifaceted. He's got some good in him. He's got some bad in him. Yep. And in the end, he's just kind of trying to make his own way through the world. Yeah. And I think this. I agree with you. It was. There were times where it kind of felt a little bit like, okay, you're trying too hard, or this feels kind of strange. But it does go back to you got to see this is a kid that got dumped in in a hard time in the universe, a hard time in the Empire, and had to fight his way through. And you kind of could see here the beginnings of how he built into that legendary persona that Harrison Ford does so masterfully. Yeah. Yeah, and so so for the most part, especially near the end of the movie, I feel like he was getting down on a lot of those mannerisms that, mm-hmm. that, that reminded me of Harrison Ford, particularly how he like would shoot his weapon, the way oh, he shot yeah. his blaster. He, I thought he got that damn fat. But, um, but there were some other just... just very minute mannerisms that I feel he, he really did hit uh, with Harrison Ford. But there are other shots where it's like, man, I'm not seeing him as Han. But more in the beginning of the movie. Uh, whereas, like, I just wasn't really seeing him as Han. And that was probably my biggest fear going into this movie is mm-hmm. he, this guy's got to get Han right. Yeah. Um, and, and I feel like sometimes he did and sometimes he didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, the directing, um, I also gave it 90. I'm not really going to go into a lot of detail here. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I know they had a lot of directing issues on this movie, as we all know, right? Ron Howard refilmed 70% of the movie. It was darker than what they were, what the original directors had had done. 
I know some people have complained that the cinematography in this one was almost too dark, like 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 physically too dark. Like too hard to see. T- yeah, mm-hmm. it was hard to see. I didn't mind that. I feel like the mm-hmm. kind of the gritty underworld crime. I Especially thought I thought it suited Carilla. that. Yeah, I, yeah, I gave it high points for that western nitty grittiness. Yeah, Definitely. so I appreciated the directing on on this uh, quite a bit, especially in the time frame that when Ron Howard was brought on board to kind of um, make it his. Um, I thought he did an awesome job. Um, one of my bigger issues with the movie is probably the screenplay, though. Uh, this got an 82 for me. I feel like the story overall was fairly generic. It was fairly cookie cutter, fairly predictable. It didn't have a lot of depth to it. It was fairly surface level. I can agree with that. One of the things that made me push it down just a little bit was that very ending. Just because it had been such a grand movie. And it was mm. a grand adventure. It was a grand space adventure all mm-hmm. the way through. And then that final part where, I mean, we don't want to spoil it too much if you haven't seen it, but that's your fault if you haven't seen it yet. (laughs) Spoiler Um, alert. Yes. Right at the end where the double cross and then the double cross again, and then it ends up being a triple cross. And it's like, that's great. And it's like, that's a Han Solo move. But you kind of walk away feeling, I needed something a little bit bigger, Mm. something on a slightly grander scale, a big finale almost. And instead, they just kind of, all the characters just kind of walk their separate ways, which fit the storyline mm-hmm. but from kind of more of an entertainment point of view i wanted to see something a little bit larger mm. and i think that was one of the reasons i had to put it down well, just a little bit too and for me i actually didn't mind that part i didn't mind that it was a smaller story mm-hmm. um i i feel like the han solo story i, I feel like that was kind of good that it was a smaller story but i feel like it was almost a too simple story okay but i actually i really did like the, the ending myself I, I feel like it was the parts kind of leading into the ending that I don't know. It, it just seemed too 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 you know, predictable. Almost. Too predictable, almost like a a a, a uh, paint by numbers kind of thing. <laughs> um, it's a little harsh. Uh, oh, I mean, I still enjoy the movie yeah. overall, um, and I'm I'm and I'm still processing. I mean, this movie has only been out for a couple weeks at the time yeah. of making this uh, video, so I'm still processing it. But I know for the screenplay, it, it did get down low. My next category is music, and I gave it at eighty. Um, this is, out of all the movies, um, it got my lowest score in this category of music. And, I mean, I own the soundtrack. I've been listening to the soundtrack. And, and it's good, but it's, it's, it's just clearly not John Williams. Mm-hmm. Right? It's clearly not John Williams. Ever, in almost every movie, I look for that, that, that one single piece, at least one track that, that really catches me. And this, this movie didn't have that. Interesting. Um, so this one got an 80 for me in music. And then for Star Wars Magic, I gave it an 85. And honestly, it, for this category, it's hard to rate the Star Wars stories movies on it it's because it is purposefully being different mm-hmm. than Star Wars. I mean, that's the intent. This is a under, you know, a, a you know underground crime world kind of thing, <laughs> uh, which is very different than the epicness of what Star Wars is. Um, but that being said, I mean, it just it's, it didn't. There's a lot of times where it didn't have that feel of Star Wars. Like it was, like you could almost make this any, about any other characters. Just name Han something else, name Lando something else, change up Chewbacca to another kind of monstrous creature, and this could have been any other movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't necessarily have it been a Star Wars movie. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Interesting. So that's why it kind of got low on my Star Wars magic. So overall, it got an 84.4 as my rating. Nice. All right. Okay, Spaceman Ricky, what is your number five? My number five is The Last Jedi. Oh. Okay. And I just, I gotta go out and say this up front. I love The Last Jedi. I'm one of its more adamant defenders. Uh, enjoyed the film immensely. And, you know, I mean, it's really hard to, to rank down any of these. This one was probably the hardest to look at my list and be like, oh, mm. I can't believe this has to be in the, in the bottom half. <laughs> uh, what, what I'll say about The Last Jedi is it really rocked the, um, I felt the operatic nature of it. You know, in that it was visually incredible. Uh, great music. Mm-hmm. Also, again, you know, small set of characters that are very interlinked. They're making a big impact. Just, I thought that was wonderful. And, and you know, obviously in space, the whole movie takes place in space practically, <laughs> which maybe was a little too much, if anything. But where it got me was it lacked, lacked the nitty gritty a little bit. Hmm. It, was, yeah. it was very flashy. Um, Captain Phasma still drives me nuts. I cannot, I <laughs> cannot kinda, handle the, the shiny uniform. I love the character, can't handle the uniform. Hmm. But here's where Last Jedi 
ends up not making the cut. And for me, it, it was the good and evil clash. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I love Raylo. I love where this is going. I love the gray <laughs> nature of that. I love that Star Wars is experimenting with new things. Yeah. So I think it's a great thing, mm-hmm. but it doesn't quite pass the good and evil Western test. I feel like this movie, um, and, and I have this problem with Force Awakens too, is just that there's a little bit of a lack of, of the, that great good and evil. Hmm. Um, so... So that's what I'll say on the, on the Last Jedi. But again, this one is the one where I probably have the least critical things to say. Yeah. Simply because if it weren't for the other the, movie being the so other, much better, if it weren't for the movie, I rank is is in its place on the on the, on the better list, needing to be there for me personally. It, mm-hmm. you know, I, all the, the it tied. It was a tie, and it you know I lost the tiebreaker. You have okay. to stick around to see exactly. You, you will why. have to stick around, but all right. um, actually, it and the next couple are all ties. But <laughs> <laughs> but something has to go down. So. It's true. So yeah, that's me, Last Jedi. So we had uh, two solos and a Last Jedi. Okay. In five spot. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So, all right. How about number four? <laughs> I'll keep talking. This is Spaceman Ricky here, reminding you all to uh, not drink and drive, but <clears throat> <laughs> or fly. Uh, this will keep the conversation real original because you've been listening to this video for 20 minutes and all you've heard talk of is Solo. Solo. All so right. Solo takes my next spot. You're number four. Um, four from all the right. bottom. Mm-hmm. And loved the movie. Thought it was a blast. Uh, uh, Fulcrum, you really hit it on the head. It was fun. Yeah. You know, I just, I, I watched it twice that first week and I was like, this is a blast. I hope they make more Solo movies. Mm-hmm. Agreed. It's great. It's great. In fact, it scored really high. Uh, in my Western space categories, and it was very much a Western. It was a great mm-hmm. Western. It's probably the most closest to the Western of any of the movies. In fact, yeah, from a, from a pure genre perspective, it it was the second highest I rated in terms okay. of Westernness. Interesting. We'll have to wait till next video for the, the most Western. There we go. All right, but I'm gonna guess a New Hope on that, but don't say <laughs> I'm close. But here's where here's where I lost out, and we've already talked a lot about Solo, so I don't want to say too many comments. But for me, it was the opera thing. Hmm. Um, visually impressive <laughs> musically pretty good you're right not much of the music stuck with me I thought the adjustment they made to the main Star Wars theme was fun and yeah. interesting I would love to hear that used more yes and one thing that stood out to me is when they're uh, when he's, he's going into the reenlistment center or whatever oh he's yeah gonna, he's joining so the Imperial March they played the Imperial March but, but in a at major. the end of the first bar where you would have played a minor note they play a major note yeah it's a major and version I yeah. love that I've heard other people try to make the Imperial March a major song and they go way too hard in the movie version they just changed one note that comes up a lot yeah and I thought I it believe fun. it's the same song that they used in Star Wars Rebels in um, it's like Empire Day or something like that. It's one of the earlier episodes, I think, in season one. It's very similar to the Empire Day theme. I think there might be some adjustments. I'd have to listen to the solo one some more. Yeah. Because it's a real minor. I didn't even catch it the first time. Yeah. But then I was like, wait a minute, they should have gone to. And yeah. it really changes. Yeah, the yeah whole it's more of a patriotic mm-hmm. version than an ominous yes. version. Yes. You can so, see why it was used to recruit and not mm-hmm. terrorize. I, I mean. I know it's. I know we're on you right now, but you mentioned music, <laughs> and I, there was something I forgot to say on music, which was. While I rate, did rate music the lowest out of all the movies, what I did appreciate about about the music was I felt it did a really good job of integrating the pre-existing soundtracks that John Williams had made Definitely. into the movie, and it did it in a very seamless way. At least I thought. Yeah, I thought. I thought Rogue One did a little better job, but we didn't yeah. talk about that. Well, later. yeah, I mean, this is my lowest music rating, so, <laughs> so I, I agree. Those are some things I love about Solo, but here's what I don't love. Okay. There is, <laughs> there is no galactic impact to this story. <laughs> no. So small cast characters. Very interconnected. I mm-hmm. love that. Mm-hmm. But the events don't... They don't change the galaxy. Mm-hmm. I think, I think that's one, part of the point, though. I think Rogue, Rogue One is a Star Wars story. Mm-hmm. That changed the galaxy. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Solo didn't. And so I'm not knocking it as like, oh, I wish they would have made it have galactic impact. I'm just saying like, it never was going to. This right. is an origin story. So mm-hmm. unfortunately for Solo, mm-hmm. they're, they're starting behind. They have a bit of a disadvantage in that it, yeah. if it had huge galactic impact, what? it wouldn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree. I mean, that's why, that's why I ranked low for me on that Star Wars magic. And it's like hard to say that because that's not its intent. It's purposely trying to be different in that regard. Yeah. Yes. But yet, since I have that as part of my rubric, I have to right. follow through. Now maybe future solo movies, if were there to be any, could would would start to ramp up their impact a little bit. Yes. But it also it makes sense that Han's character is kind of a, a galactic nobody until New Hope. Mm-hmm. Like it yeah, makes, he like should it, be. it needs to stay that way to a degree. So 
I would be weary of um, the creators of future solo movies mm-hmm. taking my criticism and trying to appease me too much. <laughs> right. I really don't think damaging. they're going to. Mm-hmm. So. so yeah, that's me on Solo. Love the movie, mm-hmm. but it's an origin story. kind of sets itself back from the get-go. Yeah. All right. So that takes it to me. So Darth Ford here. And my number four is actually The Last Jedi. Oh, great. So we just kind of... I guess we're just talking about two movies right now, really. (laughs) Yeah, so this is... uh, It's been like 20, 30 minutes, and we've just been talking about two different movies. So hopefully you're a little different. I'll switch it up for you guys. We'll find out. But uh, Last Jedi. So um, I'll give you my my in-depth analysis here. Um, Not so in-depth, but... um, (laughs) So acting, I actually really appreciate about the, the acting in this movie. And I know me and you've discussed this and have disagreed on it, I believe. Um, but I really enjoyed Daisy Ridley's acting, uh, Adam Driver's acting. Um, so so I, I feel like with what the actress had, so I gave it acting here 100. Oh, um, I really I really enjoyed the way they portrayed their characters um, as, as they were directed to. Now, I didn't necessarily agree with all the decisions the characters made, mm-hmm. uh, which I'll get to here in a second. Um, that's more of a screenplay issue. But as far as the acting is concerned, I really thought that all the actors did an excellent job on this movie. Um, and in that same regard, the directing. I thought the directing in this movie was was on point. I gave the directing a 95. Um, I thought it, it, it did a lot of really interesting shots that were unique to Last Jedi. Oh, yeah, super cinematic. Yeah, I mean, the whole hyperdrive into the oh, super... and the silence. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was, just, oh, it was like perfection. an anime, which is very different. Uh, but there are different parts where, you know, near the beginning when, when they're dropping the bombs, right? And it's like so dramatic. And that's the one thing I really appreciate about this movie is anytime a character was was in peril, you felt it. Even it's like so, some nobody that's bomber sure. lady who I don't even know her, her character's name. It's the sister of Rose. Um, I heard her, I think Paige, maybe it's Paige, know. but anyway, um, you guys could correct me on the comments, I guess, but I think it's Paige, but, but the, the, just, just where she almost misses catching the remote and all that. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like any time a character was in peril, you felt it. And that's, that's just good directing right there. And they just had a lot of interesting shots. So, uh, Ryan Johnson, I thought he did an excellent job in the technical aspects of directing. My next category is screenplay. Um, now this is where Last Jedi loses it, um, and I should have ex- I should explain that screenplay out of all these categories are weighted for me, meaning screenplay is the most important. Ah, okay. uh, so that's where I get my percentages from, and I count my screenplay a little extra because that's the most important category of these for me. Um, I meant to explain that earlier, but the screenplay for Last Jedi I gave a seventy five. Uh, that's my one of my lowest. Um, it's my second lowest of all the Star Wars movies actually, and um, my biggest issue is the major what, what i feel is one of the major uh, plot holes in the movie is you have the the resistance ship just narrowly escaping the first order right mm-hmm. and one their explanation is they're smaller and lighter you're in space <laughs> that doesn't make sense you could just say they're faster i would accept that you didn't have to say that i mean you start saying they're lighter i don't know that that throws me off but then it's like you have an armada of star destroyers behind you all it would take is a couple of them to light speed right in front of them and knock them out. Why, why are we having this whole slow, drawn out, drawn out chase. chase? But it's like the most boring chase ever because they're yeah. going at five miles per hour. And that's like the major plot of the movie too. That wasn't even like a side plot. That was like a major driving plot of the movie. Um, which, it, it didn't bother me at the time. But the more I thought about it, the more it just kind of ate at me. That, and I feel like it had some of the worst dialogue of any of the movies. Which is saying something compared to some of the dialogue we get in some of the other movies. <laughs> but like, particularly Rose's dialogue. Like, I thought the actress who plays Rose did a good job with what she was given. But her, a lot of her dialogue where, like, she says something like, you know, after she stops and saves Finn from crashing in, you know, pulling an Independence Day move, right? Where he's supposed to, like, crash into <laughs> the Death Star weapon thing, the battering ram. And then she says something along the lines of, you know, this is how we win, right? By by not by fighting what we hate, but by saving what we love. Right when she says that, they like, and then and then it blows open the hole to where all their people are. It's like that makes no sense. And then and then we all celebrate that Luke steps out and and, and does the sacrifice play as well. And that oh, that's okay, but not when Finn yeah. does it. Um, it. It just seemed it seemed dumb. And then and then earlier in Cantabite, they, they released the the Fathiers, and the Finn says. Well, at least it hurt him, and now it's worth it. And then, and then she lets that one last fathier go, that you know horse beast. And she says, "Now it's worth it." I'm like, "Shut up!" It's not. <laughs> it's, 
your whole plan failed and now the resistance is yeah. doomed. Like, that was worth it because you save some animals that they're going to just recatch anyway? Like, I don't know. I'm going to go on a rant if I, if I continue on <laughs> that. I need to keep moving. So, yeah. So, so screenplay, it got a 75. Uh, music, I gave a 90. Um, I love the soundtrack to The Last Jedi. I thought it was really well done. Uh, particularly when Luke steps out and confronts Kylo Ren and the music ramps up. It's very subtle. Um, I, almost I don't think I caught it the first time, but I really grew to appreciate it. Only got a 90 because, there's again, there's no one track that really stood out, though. Um, but for the most part, throughout, it stayed consistently good. So it stays a 90. And then Star Wars Magic, I gave it an 80. And this was the lowest of all the movies that uh, on this category of Star Wars Magic, even more than Rogue One and Solo. And the reason why is Canto Bite. Because yeah. this is the only movie yeah. where I remember seeing in my first showing, sitting in, watching Canto Bite, and, and thinking... This does not feel like Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I never had that feeling in Rogue One. I never had that feeling in Solo. Maybe afterward I reflect on it with those. Like, mm, it was kind of different. But Last Jedi was the only movie where while watching, I had that thought of this does not feel like Star Wars. And so it gets the 80. So overall, uh, Last Jedi got an 84.3, which is only 0.1 lower than Solo. Wow. Only 0.1% wow. lower Splitting than hairs. Solo. It's very close. All right. Any comments on Last Jedi, or have we talked Last Jedi quite a bit? Yeah, we've talked quite a bit. Yeah. I'll just say one thing that I accept a lot of that criticism of Last Jedi, especially Cantabite. I, I think you could have cut that scene. But for me, what keeps the Star Wars nature of Last Jedi mm -hmm. so well is all that all actually that we get to learn and experience regarding the theology of the Force. Mm. Yeah. And for me, for me being someone who who really loves the the mythology mm -hmm. that surrounds Star Wars, which is why I'm just such into legends and all that. That all that we got out of that in terms of here is the force, here's how it works. Like mm -hmm. there was just a huge education jump made, I think, mm -hmm. for the average Star Wars viewer in how the force works mm -hmm. and what that is. And so as as rough as the context of all that knowledge was in Last Jedi, and, and there was a, it's it's a very imperfect and flawed film. It's hard for me to to see past the beauty of all that theology. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I would agree. My fa my favorite parts of the movie deal with Luke, Kylo Ren, and Rey, yes. which yeah, are all the main absolutely. Force characters. And I feel like that's what Ryan Johnson knew. He knew what to do with that. I feel like he didn't know what to do with the rest. That's yeah. yeah. And I think this is a greater criticism when we get to three that I'm going to talk okay. about. Okay. Is that a, a bit? That's a big problem that I think new Star Wars has. Okay. All right. Um, a four. good lead in there. Uh, my number four is Revenge of the Sith. What? Yep. Really? Yep. I just wow. got a lot of major skeptical what? there. But wow. that's what I've put down as my number four. Mostly because I think it provides the best cap to those prequels. It brings it to a point where you can see why the characters became what they were. Mm -hmm. Now, there's points, the dialogue is rough. The acting, I think we all can agree, is pretty hard to watch sometimes. You've done that yourself. <laughs> I but, didn't mind the acting in Revenge of the Sith. Okay. I enjoyed the acting in Revenge of the Sith. Mine is Padme. With Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes, obi -Wan I could Obi -Wan watch Obi -Wan three movies, movies of But okay, <laughs> I'll address Revenge of the Sith at a later time. But yeah, for me... And it's looking again at an overall experience. Mm -hmm. The reason I enjoy it so much is because of the clash of good and evil. Mm. So you see, at the beginning of it, you see Anakin is struggling and then you see him start to fall. It was a little bit of a quick fall and mm -hmm. it kind of was a bit of it a messy rushed. fall at it times. Was. Rushed fall would be a great way to put it. But to see the pure evil of the Empire being born and to yep. see that, especially in Palpatine, to see that then juxtaposed against the Jedi, completely innocent or what they think is innocent, completely caught off guard, especially by Order 66. I mean, can anyone who has a heart watch that and mm. not be broken ooh, to pieces? Ooh, it's tough. So I think that one, it really, as a Star Wars fan, it really breaks you down mm. to see this, this culmination of everything going wrong and happening. And then you understand why the Empire was the way it was and how it began and how you could have gotten rid of such powerful Jedi mm -hmm. well, it was because they were completely deceived. And then that lightsaber fight mm -hmm. between Anakin and Obi-Wan, 
I'm gonna. I think it's the best one hmm. in all of Star Wars. It's okay. pretty good. And to I me, like it a lot. The entertainment yeah. value, the excitement, and the drama behind that is worth every every minute. Of so every what minute. don't you like about it? Why yeah, why, is, is why is it in your body? Yeah, stuff. Why yeah is it that's so a lot of good stuff you just said. So what's? Oh, because I like the other the ones bo- way better. Because oh, okay, it's so it's. <laughs> so you like you like Solo though better than Revenge of the Sith. I do. So the reason for Revenge of the Sith being in the bottom is kind of the main drags against the prequels. It's cheesy. The characters are sometimes uncomfortable to watch because they're so bad at portraying what they're trying to do. The dialogue can be rough. Um, And it also feels very quick. It Mm. feels like all of a sudden we got dropped into this, uh, this like sad fall of Anakin. You kind of, because in... Episode two, you don't even see a hint of that. Now, going back and watching mm. the Clone Wars was helpful. Well, the, the Sam people. You see a little bit, but I mean, you know what? He, it is his rushed. mom died. It, he, it he, is. He, well, he yeah, yeah. Him. From the point that he cuts off Mace Windu's hand yes. to the point that he completely embraces the dark side it was, is a matter it was of a second. Rather, yeah, it was rather fast. So, fast. Um, so I think for that, that was a main reason I didn't like it. Okay. And then, That's a fair point. Yeah. One of the things that I really really irks me about Revenge of the Sith is the humor aspect. I think in these new ones, they've gotten a lot better at putting it in there. Mm. Like, Rogue One has some hilarious moments. Solo has some great moments. And even The Force Awakens Awakens is is pretty funny. funny. It's pretty hilarious. And it's, but it's well balanced. Mm -hmm. With Revenge of the Sith, it was like, oh, we're gonna be funny now. And it felt uncomfortable and nobody was ready for it to be funny Mm. and it actually just wasn't funny. do you have a, what are you referring to? I'm trying to think of a, a real funny scene in Revenge of the Sith. I always think of the time when they get on General Grievous's ship. Most of the interactions are oh, with General Grievous. Oh, in the beginning. Yeah, but like right at okay. the beginning. And then they're trying to make jokes to like R2-D2, who now is like a super weapon all of a sudden. He's okay. not just a droid. He can like kill other droids really quickly oh, and wow. easily. Yeah, R2 got, got He fast. got really fast. Really good, really fast. So... <laughs> Well, he's he's the Batman utility belt of the Star Wars universe. That's a great, a great comparison. So, okay, yeah. all right, Revenge of the Sith. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so that's a little higher on my list. Not yeah, gonna that's. <laughs> I won't. I won't be talking about Revenge of the Sith in this video. No. Oh, Spoiler alert. Interesting. Not be either. Interesting. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. So, uh, so we've all done our number four. So our yeah. number three. Okay. And you're back with back. Spaceman Ricky. So, um, hi, I'm Spaceman Ricky, and today I'm going to talk to you about. A Fall From Glory. Oh. When the movie came out, the hype was real. And this was, for me, I immediately put it really high on my list. Um, it has not aged well in my book. Aged? Phantom Menace? And uh, for that reason, Force Awakens has dropped from what? maybe a top What? Age? It's only been out for a couple years. It has aged very poorly for wow. me. And part of it is actually The Last Jedi's fall. <laughs> um, for, for clarifying fears I had about Force Awakens. So what I will say about it is if you had to look at my Western Space Opera score, it scored a very middle of the road three out of five in all three categories. Wow. And, and so here's what I'll say about Force Awakens. They tried to make a Star Wars movie, and they did a great job making a Star Wars movie. Okay. I enjoy it every time I watch it. Okay. But there are some decisions that were made that I think just, for me, caused the movie to be, quite frankly, unmemorable. Huh. Um, <laughs> doesn't hang... There's, there's nothing that keeps drawing me back and wanting me to think about and contemplate more. Last Jedi has that. The whole bit with the Force and the connection well, between Rey and Kylo. Do you think that is because we haven't seen Episode 9 yet? Maybe. So so That's maybe true. Episode 9, maybe whoever's making that movie can save Force Well, movies. I mean, the reason why you could go back with Episode 8. Because before, a lot of people could go back with Episode 7 to help think about Episode 8. Mm-hmm. But now that Episode 8 has come and kind of done away with all... It seems like what they're building up to in Episode 7... You know, they seem like they disregarded yeah, so, that. Yeah, so that, that might be part of the criticism is that, well, 8 just went so far away from the, the foundation that 7 laid. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think it actually, you're, Darth Ford, you're hitting it pretty right on the head because one of the big problems I have with Force Awakens is extraneous characters. Mm. Um, I think the new Star Wars trilogy has an excess of characters and, unimp- and, and quite frankly, pointless characters. Mm. Yeah. Um, you think about the... The original trilogy, four, five, and six. Yep. There are really only like six characters. 
new Star Wars, it's like they're coming out of everywhere. And <laughs> every 15 minutes we have to introduce a new major character. And you're, it never really clarifies how major anyone's going to be. And so maybe this is the problem of having different directors involved. Because mm -hmm. the beauty of 4, 5, and 6 and the downfall of 1, 2, and 3 is that the same hand was driving the boat. Whether mm -hmm. or not physically sitting in the director's chair, there was one hand driving the story. Yeah. Four, five, I'm sorry, seven, eight, and nine do not have that. So for me, it's extraneous characters. I, and if we're just talking characters in The Force Awakens, because I think the problem got even worse in Last Jedi. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't understand the role of Poe. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the role of Finn. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the role of Captain Phasma. And mm -hmm. I don't understand the role of the First Order. Hmm. Yeah. So First Order is cool. I like it. I just don't think it was properly fleshed out, and I think they tried to introduce too many characters. I don't think characters. it was properly explained. Yes. Um, I like the idea of the First Order once I really dug into it, but I had to read a lot of different articles, yeah, and I've read a, a lot, lot of, of different books, books, books too, so like to really get into what is where the First Order came from. They right. never explained that, and now with how Last Jedi did with Snoke, I'm wondering how much we're even going to... I don't think they're going to address it. They may yeah. not. If The First Order seemed very cookie-cutter to me. Mm -hmm. Cookie-cutter bad guys. And was the galactic impact there? Kind of. Was it a huge open universe? Yeah. Yeah, it was big. Maybe a little too big. Maybe a little too big. Was it a nitty-gritty film? Yes. Was there a class, clash of good and evil? Mm -hmm. Yes, but it was kind of generic, and I don't necessarily understand why there's so many characters. <laughs> so, mm. so for me, The Force Awakens is a little unmemorable because I'm not really learning anything new about the universe like I do in Last Jedi, which I think educates you a lot on things. Mm. I'm not really learning anything new in Force Awakens. It's just, it literally seems to me, and nine, you might be able to fix this. It literally seems to serve to introduce characters, not to introduce story. Hmm. Um, okay. and whereas I think New Hope introduced story and characters so uh, with that in mind Force Awakens became kind of unmemorable well, and I think that's a, why a lot of people didn't like Last Jedi though is because it it seemed like Force Awakens was setting stuff up and right. Last Jedi disregarded that and so you're putting the fault then it seems like on Force Awakens I, I and whereas it seems like a lot Jedi. of people put that fault on Last I'm Jedi I'm putting the fault on Last Jedi but yet, it's Force Awakens that's suffering because Force yes, Awakens Force number Awakens three, suffering. whereas Last Jedi hey, was. Look, if five. you're going to make these movies, you got to make them have continuity. And if you're not going to have continuity, I agree. I'm just going to take the most recent one as the direction of the franchise. <laughs> okay. So, Last Jedi Fair wins enough, I suppose. simply because it got the last word. I would put the blame on the most recent one, but okay. And also the Force thing. The Force <laughs> is just not well discussed in Force Awakens. For being yeah. called Force Awakens, we just don't get a lot about the Force. Mm. That's, that's true. It's kind of a misnomer. <laughs> So right. I hope you guys will be very magnanimous regarding that ranking. But, um, <laughs> well, that's just, I mean, I knew I knew you had a lower opinion of Force Awakens, especially compared to me. Unfortunately, it's getting lower every day. So, wow, yeah. that is rough. That's so, um, Darth Ford, I think you pulled the Jack of Diamonds. You're up next. Yeah. Yep, I did. All right. So for me, uh, my number three in this list, uh, so we're counting down, is uh, The Phantom Menace. Uh, the Phantom Menace. Um, Duel of the yeah. Fates there. Yeah, Duel of the Fates. That's good stuff right there. So good. Uh, so acting in this one, I mean, we kind of addressed it when you're talking about Revenge of Sith. Mm -hmm. Acting in this category, I gave it an 80. For Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson, Liam Neeson yeah. is everything. Liam Neeson bumped that thing up. Bring um, him back for number nine. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> um, but even Ian McGregor, for as for small as a part he was in The Phantom Menace. It's true. Um, but, but I thought really the only the only thing that really brought the acting down in Phantom Menace was Jake Lloyd which I hate to bag on him because he was just a kid but Jake Lloyd and Ahmed Best playing Jar Jar Binks um, for me that was the only I mean I guess the Gungans in general but that's not so much an acting issue as it is part of the script mm -hmm. I would say uh, but, but, but since those are some of our central characters in there Anakin little boy Anakin and Jar Jar um, that that for me is probably what what pushes that movie down. Yeah. Right? I mean, that, those are almost easy targets. That's the thing that everyone talks about. Yeah. But that is the thing that that hurts the acting here. But Liam Neeson, I thought I did a good job. I thought Ian McGregor did a good job. Um, I thought Ian McDermott, you know, Palpatine, even though he's not in it that much uh, either. I thought he did a really good job. He does really good subtle things. Like at the end, well, I'll be yeah. watching your career, you know, closer. He's you know, whatever he says. scares the crap out of you. Um, he does a really good job for as little as he is in it. And I think throughout the prequels, Ian, Ian McDermott is probably the best thing in the prequels. You know, the Emperor um, Palpatine, as far as acting. But anyways, mm -hmm. moving on. Directing, um, got an eighty. 
Um, this is tied with three of my movies as the lowest directing. Um, who, who directed Phantom Menace? George Lucas. He did all three prequels. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, George Lucas did Phantom Menace, Attack of Clones, Revenge of Sith, and A New Hope. Okay. Were the ones he directed. But yeah, I mean, the directing in this one is just stale, right? It, it, it's, it's very basic. If, if you watch Red Letter Media at all, uh, they do a really good thorough review of the Phantom Menace, and that's one thing he really picks on. Is, is just the, the technical aspect of the directing in this movie. It was just not there. What gives it up, you know, I, I give it an 80s, which is a B. That's still pretty good. And what, the reason why is because of the choreography, mm. uh, the lightsaber battle, particularly so the last, good. you know, the, the two-on-one Darth Maul against Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn. That, for me, is the best uh, lightsaber battle in all of Star Wars. And that's what bumps it up. That's what gives it up to the 80 um, is, awesome. is because of, it was just really well choreographed screenplay i give the screenplay an 80 overall i thought it was i actually really enjoy the story of uh the phantom menace yeah. i think a lot of people miss a lot of it because they get so distracted with what's bad about the phantom menace particularly mm-hmm. jar jar that that they kind of miss the story i mean it's called a phantom menace and what that's really referring to is how palpatine's in the background pulling the strings on everything and no one's catching it and I really enjoy, like, I spent one time watching The Phantom Menace for five hours with a good buddy of mine, and we would pause it. That's why it took five hours, right? Uh, yeah. It was like, we'd watch yeah. it, we'd pause it, and we would discuss, okay, like, what's going on here? And we would analyze the heck out of it. And th- there's a there's a lot of substance in The Phantom Menace. You just gotta, you kinda gotta dig for it. Yep. Um, but there's a lot there. So I really appreciate the story that The Phantom Menace showed us. What hurt The Phantom Menace in terms of screenplay was the dialogue. Mm. Some of that dialogue was, was kind of dumb. Uh, yeah. Particularly the Jar Jar dialogue, but <laughs> not only the Jar Jar dialogue, but that's what that's what I heard it. The music, a hundred. Oh, my uh, this is one of my favorite honestly, soundtracks. This might be the best soundtrack. It's, it's one of my favorites. Um, a lot, a lot of my music has a hundred, so this is tied with a lot of them uh, for my favorite soundtracks. But the Phantom I mean, Duel of Fates is awesome. So uh, when Anakin's leaving his mom and the music ramps up, I mean, it, 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 he knew how to use the music to play to our emotions, and he did that wonderfully. Star Wars Magic, uh, I gave it an 85, which which for me is pretty good. I mean, that's still B plus, uh, you know, B average. It, it feels like Star Wars, but at the same time, one of the one of the things that that George Lucas always talked about was that used universe, right? And this this was almost going against that in a lot of regards. Um, and, and that's what that's kind of a common complaint with the prequels. What he talked about a lot in the originals, he backpedaled on in the prequels, and one of those being this used universe concept. So that's why it kind of gets uh, bumped down a little. It, I mean, it, it's kind of an easy one to pick on, I guess. And that's yeah. that's part of why it gets bumped down, too. So overall, it got an 83.6 uh, for me. Just okay. a solid score. Yep. Okay, well, my number three will be short because I don't want to keep beating a dead horse. But my number three was Last Jedi. Mm. So, And the reasons have been discussed at length. But the reason, the main reason I didn't like it was all the excess characters... There was yep. just so too many. much going on. To it was it was obnoxious. The especially that uh, what was she was she an admiral the lady with the purple hair? Yeah, Admiral Hoda. Admiral Hoda, thank you. Oh. She I, I can't stand her character. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. And the whole feminist issue, like okay, if you're a dude, you can't make a decision, but if you're a woman, somehow you can make a decision and run the world. Awful. I hated it. I'm glad you said that. As a woman, hated it. It was stupid. Awful. But. What were what redeemed the movie as Spaceman Ricky was saying, it's the force. That dive into the connection between Kylo Ren and Ray was just that powerful. That was pretty cool. That was cool. And then Luke coming in at the end mm-hmm. as the force projection of himself standing yeah. there saving it was just it was it was spot on. The force like, is that very, was fabulous. Very multidimensional in that film because you do have yeah. the Kylo Ren and Rey mm-hmm. thing, which is the obvious force thing. But there's also like Luke's personal battle with the force. Mm. Yes. Yeah, because he disconnects like, himself from the force, and there's a moment where he reconnects himself to the yes. force, and how Rey kind of pushes him through yes. that. Um, yeah. So not to interrupt you, but no, it's the true. beauty of that of the force in the Last Jedi is that it is super multifaceted. Yeah. So one final thing I really loved about the Last Jedi was how it kind of tied a lot of things together. It made a lot of things come full circle. Now, there was the part at the beginning where Luke's like, everything you just said in that sentence was wrong, and then mm-hmm. he does it again, mm-hmm. and he's like, what am I going to do, stand out in front of all of them with a laser sword, and Which then he does, does it. Yep. So I liked those little bits. But this one I read about later, I didn't notice it at first, was it says 
In A New Hope, Luke and Leia are introduced. Luke is introduced to a projection of Leia asking for help. Mm-hmm. In the end, Luke and Leia's last interge- interaction is a projection oh, of Luke yeah, yeah. giving help. Yeah. So that I complete that. full circle tie, yeah. and I can't it, take it, that credit for that. That wasn't the original. Yeah. It was just so beautifully done yeah. that... I really, yeah. really enjoyed that. Well, I mean, there's definitely a lot of cool stuff like that that is throughout uh, Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um, I talk a lot of the, about the, a lot of that more symbolic stuff in, in my review of Last Jedi, so yes. I'm not going to go through it all right now. Um, but yeah, I do appreciate Last Jedi for a lot of that. And, and one thing I did appreciate about Last Jedi was when Kylo Ren and Rey team up. Um, I thought that was one of the one of the coolest it's fight scenes sweet of of the movies. Scene, that's for sure. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because we hadn't mentioned yeah. that yet. Yeah, yeah, Last Jedi. I think really comes down to how much does the extraneous characters and storylines mm-hmm. bother you? Yeah. Like how how distracted are you going to be? If you're really distracted, Last Jedi is going to slide down. Mm-hmm. If it, if you know if you're a person with short attention span anyway, maybe yeah, it's a little hard. Well, it offers a lot of cool stuff, but I just feel the overall plot, which for me yes. is the most important thing, was was bad. Yep. I, I really there's a lot of cool elements in the Last Jedi, but just the overall plot of it. I, I didn't like it. It, was, it, was it a, made no sense. I mean, talking about Holdo. Why didn't Holdo at least tell people about their plan? Terrible was, leadership. Absolutely terrible. I'm trying, you're trying well, to make the reason why that, but she did not do a good job. The reason why she didn't tell them about the plan was so that Finn could go off and do an adventure. They did it for plot reasons. Yes. Like, and that's never the good reason. That's never no, a good reason. Just and don't even get me started on the whole Finn stuff. But all right. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so number twos. Who's going first? All right. Darth Ford. Darth Ford. Here we go. All right, my number two. So my second least favorite Star Wars movie is Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. No way. Attack of the Clones. Yep. Jumping in ahead, that's my number two as well. well all right, man. We, we had two similar. More agreements than I thought. All right. So um, acting. Got a 75, which is my lowest score for this category was in this movie. Uh, I feel like this was the worst acted particularly by Hayden Christensen, the way he delivers a lot of that dialogue. I don't know how much of it is his fault, how much of it was the direction he was given, or how much of it was the screenplay. It's probably a combination of all three. I think it was mostly the um. fault of sand. <laughs> he does but, hate sand. <laughs> man, he, he just comes off as somebody who needs a restraining order on him, the way he delivers his lines. And and, it, and the reason why I blame him as the actor, because it's not just his delivery, which itself was, was bad. But then his his mannerisms, right? That's that's you can't blame anything but but you as the actor. Like his creepy smile to Padme, like dude, like that. Yeah. Like, Has that dude ever been in another movie since that? Yeah, he's been in. A, he was in Jumper, and he was he's been in a couple other movies. I don't remember off the top of my head, but um. He makes enough of royalties. Probably. But yeah, he's <laughs> uh, yeah he hasn't been anything in recently. Yeah, seventy five. Hey, Christian mainly. All right, next one is directing. Again, this has got an eighty. The same score I gave the Phantom Menace. Um, it just, it's very just dry. It's not, um, it's just very basic directing, very basic camera work. No, no interesting shots. I will say there, there is one shot that for some reason stands out to me and I don't know why, because it's nothing special at all, but there's a shot when Padme, Anakin and Obi-Wan are in the arena on Geonosis and there's a shot from the crowd where you in like in the stadium and you see all the Geonosians. So it's from their point of view and it's like zooming in on Anakin and, and for, in them in the pit in the, mm-hmm. in the arena and for, for I don't know why that, that, that shot I've always appreciated because it's like it's probably maybe because it's the only unique shot in the whole movie <laughs> where, where it's not just this over the shoulder kind of shot mm-hmm. um, and so it just stands out because it's the only thing like that but I've always appreciated that shot screenplay gave it a 77 it's down due to a lot of the dialogue the dialogue really hurts this movie um, the reason why it's, it's up is as much as it is is because I actually enjoy the story. If I could get over the dialogue of what they actually say, right? <laughs> what they're but, doing. But, but what they're doing and what the yeah. story is and what their words at least mean, mm-hmm. right? Maybe they should have reworded it. Yeah. But what, what what they're actually getting at and what the story is driving toward. I love the mystery element of it. I wish it paid off, the whole mystery of Scythe Vidius, which the Clone Wars cartoon pays it off. Yeah. But that should have been paid off in Revenge yeah, of the Sith. Yeah, wow, that, that was a long wait we had to wait. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's because, yeah, yes. it's... They, they, that should have been paid off for Revenge of the Sith. But anyway, I, I enjoyed the mystery aspect of it. I enjoy the story of it. I enjoy how it's it's building up to this climactic, galactic war, which is where it ends. Yeah. It ends at the beginning yeah. of the Clone War, um, which I love. I love the whole idea of you're not really sure about Dooku at first. 
Um, and just, again, this whole idea of really it's just, I love the overall story of the prequels of it's this one man who's leading both sides of, a, of an artificial war that he's made up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right? Palpatine, Sidious, same person. It's fascinating. Leading really both fascinating. sides of this. I love, uh, the, for me, I, I just love that. I think that's a very interesting story. Oh, it's a blast. Um, and so that's why Attack of the Clones script gets bumped up is because I enjoy the story of it so much, but man, the dialogue hurts it. Yeah. yeah. Um, next thing, music, 95. Um, solid it's, it's solid music uh, overall. Um, Nothing too new and memorable, though. Well, I, I really do enjoy the, the theme song, um, Across the Stars, which mm-hmm. is the main theme with Attack of Clones. It's the love song between Anakin and Padme. Um, it's this very kind of, it's, it's like romantic, but sad. It uh, does. Theme. It has a very sad uh, feel to it. And, and I do enjoy it. And I really love the music leading into the Clone Wars. Um, there's this really, I mean, I, I could try to hum it right now, but it would do no <laughs> justice to it. But, um, but, but, but I, I, you, I often play that on my soundtrack when I'm listening to Star Wars music is, is between Across the Stars, uh, that one. And when Anakin, when his mom dies and like the music ramps up, mm-hmm. it's like, na na no, no, no. Like just the way it builds up. It builds up with um, you. You can see the yeah. music evolve with the character. Yes, exactly. And and that and that's just part of the genius of John Williams. He writes yes. the music to fit the flow of the movie. Definitely. Um, it's not independent of the movie. Um, and I think that's why Star Wars music does so well. Um, and Star Wars Magic it gets to eighty five. Same thing. Phantom Menace for the same reasons. of Phantom Menace. So overall, Attack of the Clones got an eighty point nine. At eighty point nine, it's my second least favorite Star Wars movie. Not bad. Spaceman right. Ricky. Hello, everyone. I'm Spaceman Ricky. <laughs> Reminding you that the prequels weren't all that bad, okay? Mm-hmm. I put Phantom Menace here in the two spot. Oh, okay. I I like the movie better than Attack of the Clones. I mean, that's what it kind of came down to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and for me, it's not so much things that Phantom Menace did. It's just problems that Attack of the Clones had that push it down even farther. But what I, I want to say a few things on Phantom Menace. It wasn't nitty gritty. For how long they spent on Tatooine, you would have thought this would be a more nitty gritty movie. <laughs> but Tatooine even seemed clean. Somehow. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm, yeah. It's just yeah. it's just weird. The whole flying around in silver spaceships, like the whole Naboo culture, like you could have portrayed that way better, and I think it would have fit better in the Star Wars universe. But that mm-hmm. seems like some paradise world. Mm-hmm. It's like how, how could this makes no sense that like Naboo is such a paradise, no so problems, perfect. and yet a whole galactic war is going to start. Yeah, well, that is part of the problem, I think, with the story of, of Phantom Menace is because the whole idea is the Trade Federation it has a blockade around this planet mm-hmm. and people are starving and dying? Like, this is a thriving, growing, it's living a, planet. It's not doing anything. Like, how is a blockade stopping people from from living? Right. They're if, on a planet. If there, yeah. was, if there was a blockade on a planet and then we saw the planet desperately needing the blockade to be lifted, it would make more sense, but... Naboo is great. Yeah, like, yeah, this just seems like they were slapped with some kind of trade tariffs they didn't agree with and right. were peeved it, their money was getting taken it's, away. It's just a little too fake. Um, so it struggles in the Western and in the, in the space opera part of it, in the space part of it in that sense. Now, um, operatically, it looks great. Mm-hmm. It sounds really great. Beautiful. Um, this was the first Star Wars movie that I saw in theaters. Mm. And it was the first movie my dad ever took me to. Oh, so a lot of nostalgia, I imagine. So for me, Phantom Menace could never be my last favorite because of nostalgia. Okay. Um, whereas I can I could say bad things about Attack of Clones all day long. But <laughs> um, what Phantom Menace probably could have done better, Phantom yeah, Menace could have made could have made it seem more real to me. It just mm-hmm. seemed like a fake world. You know, they, it's on like five different planets, and I still never felt like there was a big galaxy. Interesting. Hmm. It could have been shot in different parts of the same planet, and you never would have known. I would have noticed, yeah. So, and maybe that's because Phantom Menace doesn't have a lot of travel scenes. Hmm. Hmm. One characteristic of Star Wars movies is time spent on a ship, yeah, and being and interacting in the time on a ship. The prequels mm-hmm. don't really have that. Whereas the Millennium Falcon provides continuity in the other movies, mm-hmm. where there's always scenes of spending time on the Millennium Falcon. Hmm. And that adds to the grandness of the galaxy because it takes time to get places. Yeah. In Phantom Menace, it doesn't take time to get anywhere. Darth Maul can just appear out of nowhere anywhere he likes at any given time. I mean, it's like he can apparate. <laughs> so, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. We're not bringing Harry Potter into this. I'm sorry. Poor, poor choice of word there. Crossing the um, 
again, the good versus evil, maybe it's trying too hard to set up good versus evil. Mm -hmm. Doesn't well, happen. the evil on this one is hiding. That's part of the point. Right, of right, one. which makes sense. And so here's where so here's where not having the clear good and evil hurts is that there's the galactic impact of Naboo's of the Battle of Naboo and of Episode One itself mm -hmm. is not made apparent until a different movie. Well, I mean, the, the galactic battle of Naboo doesn't connect to the Clone Wars. The yeah. only thing that it serves is it gets Palpatine elected to Chancellor. Right. That's the whole point. So, it. is it a part of his plan? Yes. Did it go exactly how he planned? Yes. But think about A New Hope. That's just one piece of such a big story, mm -hmm. and yet their actions change the entire galaxy. Yeah. The well, yeah, I would agree. That is that is part. Of, that is the other issue with with Phantom Menace is that it, it seems very separated than the next two movies right. that follow. Yep. Yep, discontinuity, and maybe it just you know it. I'm not. I'll give. I'll give it this. Uh, Attack of the Clones had hard work to do coming out of Phantom Menace, so Phantom Menace kind of didn't help set up Attack of the Clones for success. Hmm. But uh, yep, my second least favorite Star Wars right. movie, Phantom Menace. All right. Okay. Well, after hearing both of these guys, I do have quite a few things I want to say about my number two, which is Attack of the Clones. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, one reason, actually very similar to Spaceman Ricky, is Attack of the Clones was the first movie I ever saw in theaters, and the first movie my dad ever took me to. Hmm. And I don't remember a single part of it. I remember... <laughs> yeah. Oh. I remember walking... It's like the reverse of you. Yeah. I remember walking <laughs> out of the theater and looking up at that poster and thinking... I love Star Wars. Only memory I have of this. But it still it has that nostalgia factor that it's so deep in there. And then it's my number two because, yes, the dialogue is rough. And the there's things that are just like, oh, you just kind of cringe while you're watching. But there's also, like, watchability was a main th thing for me. I just would want to watch it again because it was. It was a lot of fun at other times. It does. I think it has one of the most concise stories mm. of any of the Star Wars. Very similar to what Darth Ford was talking about. You see what they're doing and you see why they're doing it. Whereas with Phantom Menace, like Spaceman Ricky said, there was kind of a lot of things where it's like, well, this could be happening, but this isn't really a big deal. But this is, at least with the Attack of the Clones... You knew from point A to point B where they were going, why they were going, and what they were doing. And then it followed to when it brought all the characters together, you knew why they were all brought together. Mm. So I love that about it. I love the the entire like last chunk of the movie. Basically, once Mace Windu walks out of that tunnel oh, mm -hmm. and lights over. that purple oh, lightsaber, I'm good. Like, Best scene in the whole yeah. movie. From Mace then on, well, it's yeah. a great movie. It is. Yeah. Like, the, the Jedi battle's phenomenal. Bringing in the clones to save them, so good. The fight with Count Dooku from Anakin and Obi-Wan pretty much getting their butts kicked. And then having Yoda come in there and save everyone. Yeah. It's just... It's spectacular. And for that, really for those last, I don't know, is it like 20, 30 minutes of the movie? About that, yeah. For me, that's what, I want to watch it again and again and again. That's mm. what I love about it. Yeah, th that is definitely the most memorable part of it. Like when you when when, when you say Attack of the Clones, that's where my mind goes to, oh, yeah. is, is the Clone War part of Attack of the Clones. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so that's my that's number two. Well. So yeah. And for our final movie. All right, so our least favorite Star Wars movie. Now, to be Which, clear, I think we all said it again, but we'll say it again. We like all of them. We love them all. We, we like them all. all Star Wars movies. This is the hard, hard one to do. Hey, okay, so here's Space Man Ricky. Here to close Your you out. Your least favorite Star Wars movie. Talking about my least favorite Star right. Wars. Can Clones? I guess? Yeah. Well, Attack of the Clones. That's my guess. <laughs> yeah, it's Attack of the Clones. So, <laughs> so your guess? Yeah, that's um, my guess. I think I have a pretty balanced back five, as I'll say. <laughs> um, simply because I've got two from the new trilogy, two from the prequel, and Solo in there. So I, okay. I think that's a pretty balanced. I don't think that yeah, shows... Definitely. Wait, do you have an original trilogy in there? Uh, do I do not. Oh, no, I okay. Trilogy right. because, because they're all awesome. I'm, I'm going to guess Fulcrum won't, will also not have an original trilogy. Okay. We'll but, see. We'll see. All right, go on. So, Tag of the Clones. And let's, let's be real here. Trilogy middle movies have a hard time. They okay? do. Try Unless think, your Empire Strikes Back. Try to think of like a great trilogy middle movie. Yeah, definitely not the Batman series. Back to the Future Two. Never seen Back to the Future. What? Um, <laughs> Empire uh, Strikes Back. 
That's Ooh. which we'll talk that's about later. Other, we'll other talk times. about that one. There'll be a heated discussion about. Tune in next time. To oh Space man, Man Ricky. Whoa. Bash. Empire <laughs> Strikes Back. Oh man. Ouch. So, um, like I was saying, two towers. That was rough. Okay. I like the two towers. That's it's actually fine, my favorite book just, of all the Lord of the Rings. It just books. winds on forever. Okay, we're crossing streams. All right. So, Attack of the Clones winds on forever. Okay. <laughs> you could have gone from Phantom Menace to. Revenge of the Sith, and I wouldn't have actually missed that much. The whole Clone like, Wars! Like, you could have found a way to tell us the Clone Wars were happening. I mean, quite frankly, we didn't even get to see that many clones. We saw them, like, right at the end. Obi-Wan goes on this cool journey, but it just, it just kind of, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. He's not even the one to bring the clones to the fight. It's like, what in the world? There's this all this stuff with Jango only get his head cut off. <laughs> I like that, I though. Just, I don't know. It just, it's heavy. The worst is Anakin's and Padme's subplot to the whole thing it's it's kind of a creepy look i get the romance too. thing obviously we have to have that in order for the rest of star wars to work right so, yes like, it's there Any loop i like appreciate it that but all of the stuff they're doing while they're building up to that like, yeah. all the side errands they're running it well, just and just their sense. interaction with each other like they do not seem like the people who would fall in love with each other right yeah. so so here here's the attack of the clones <laughs> <laughs> is it a mystery movie i, I don't know is it That's a romance film I don't know. Is it a political thriller? I don't know. <laughs> is it a war movie? I don't know. Is it a rescue op? I, I don't know. It's like it's trying to be a little bit of everything. Mm. And they succeed at none of them. And and it, it never it doesn't pull anything out of it. There's some great lightsaber action. Mace Windu's awesome. My favorite shot in the whole movie is when he walks in. It's just it's yeah. just great. That is Attack exactly. of the Clones is the only Star Wars movie. And, and mind you, I've seen it way too many times because as a kid. You know, there were only six of them. Yep. The new ones were new, so we watched the new ones a lot. I overwatched Attack of the Clones. Like, mm. I'm sick of watching it. Now, I haven't seen it in like five years intentionally. If I go back and watch it, I bet I mm. would enjoy it some more, but it's left a bit of a bad taste in my Oh, life. man. Well, I mean, I still enjoy Attack of the Clones. I still enjoy watching it. The beginning of it for me is probably the hardest part to get through, particularly when they're on the mission of protecting Padme, when, like, in her room. Um, and that dialogue is, is bad too. I mean, almost yeah. all the dialogue is bad in this movie, but but that's probably like my least favorite scene, and like the whole chasing when they're chasing Zam Weasel. That's probably like my least favorite scenes in that movie. But yeah, it's a harsh right. review. Well, uh, yeah, that was harsh. I know. I'm sorry. Got big opinions, yeah. but Darth Ward, we're really excited to hear what you. All right, so this one I know is uh, we may have discussed this before. I don't recall, but this is my least favorite Star Wars movie. I'm so Do excited. Do you know what it is? I have no idea. You don't know? I'm so excited All right. to hear So it you're is. saying yours is balanced. Mine's balanced because I got one of the Star Wars stories in here, right? Solo. Mm-hmm. Yep. I got the new trilogy with mm-hmm. Last Jedi in here. Yeah. I got two of the prequels mm-hmm. and I have one of the originals. <gasps> that is heresy. It's a Star Wars card in no, It is Return of the Jedi. What? My least favorite Star Wars movie. I think we need to be done with I this. I know. Dear viewer. I knew you were wow. going to. If you could see me, I'm getting up out of my chair and walking away. My Star Wars mind is blown. Return of the Jedi. I'm questioning right. everything you've now, said. Now, this was my favorite one as a kid. Now, when, when I was a kid, the prequels weren't out yet. So I only had the original three. And this was my favorite one as a kid. And this is probably the one I watched the most as a kid. Mm-hmm. But as I grew into my teen years... I slowly transitioned, and then this became my least favorite one. Um, it was like it was a weird transition, and I kind of remember as it was happening too. I was like about thirteen or so, and here's why: is I don't feel like this one really offers anything to the, the Star Wars universe. What? Now let me explain. All right, now acting. I give uh, acting a ninety. I thought they all did a pretty good job, though. I would say I noticeably see Harrison Ford not caring as much. In this movie, like you could tell, he, he, he's he's there because he's obligated, because he's contractually obligated. He wanted to die. He, he, he here's some, not, I mean, here's Ford didn't want to die. He mm-hmm. wanted his character to die. He felt that that would make more stake. You could tell he didn't really want to be a part of it, and, and it shows in his acting in this. Uh, he still does great acting. I still enjoy his acting in it, but I could tell it's his heart's not there. Directing, I gave this an eighty, which is the same I gave Phantom Menace and Tactical Clones. This this is very dry cinematography. It's not George Lucas. It's not Irwin Kirshner who did it. I forget his name. It's Richard something. But it's a very basic directing cinematography. And even the uh, choreography, like Luke rescuing Han from Jawa's Palace, that is very, very sloppy choreography. I mean, you noticeably see him kick and not actually making contact, and the guy goes down. I mean, this is like almost like wrestling bad choreography. (laughs) For me, this was the worst screenplay out of all of them. 
In terms uh, of its story. What? In terms of its story. And what? What are you talking about? Because it doesn't really... All... Out of all the other movies, all the other movies have their own story. This movie does not have its own story. This movie is only a conclusion to the original trilogy, and that's all it offers. It, de- it doesn't have a story of its own. Its story well, when is... When you're a trilogy, and you're well, the last movie in a trilogy, I'm shouldn't let you, you be there no, to no, conclude? I'm gonna let you finish. That's but. part of the role, but I can watch any of these other Star Wars movies and have a complete movie. Not so with Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is an incomplete yeah. movie. All it is is an ending. In my opinion, I think you're looking at it the wrong way. Okay. Uh, the other two movies serve Return of the Jedi. Yes. Four and five exist to prepare you for six. Now, well, see, what happened was, and what George Lucas did when he when he made A New Hope, he wrote a whole script, and then he realized, oh, the script's too long, so I'm going to just take the first act. But then he realized, well, I need an actual ending, though, because the, the first act doesn't actually have an ending. So he takes the ending of the last act, Act 3, and pops it in there. That's why we have the Death Star yeah. in A New Hope. Well, then, instead of coming with something new, he just redoes that. It, it, it doesn't offer anything new. It's, it, the, the first half is them rescuing Han Solo, which takes way too long. It's way too dry. I didn't take that long. No. It takes nearly half the movie. You get to see him fight a Rancor, and you get to see them fight the Sarlacc. So it's like... Two interesting yeah, and exciting yeah, things yeah, happened in yeah. one I, I thought that section was huge on character building because you're seeing the team really flesh out some roles and mm-hmm. really showing the bond of the mm-hmm. importance of the team. You also see Luke's leadership. I mean, until then, Luke was just like... Well, I do like Luke in this movie. His... Well, and the Ewoks. I feel like the Ewoks just... It, it was very much a foreshadowing of what was to come in, in Phantom Menace in terms mm-hmm. of how kiddie it was bringing it down. I often say my favorite parts of the Ewok scenes are when we see the Ewoks die. Like, wow! That because that brings so it real. That makes it cold. less than a kid movie. I, mean, I know that's like hard to say, but it is because that's the thing that makes it show that, oh, this isn't just teddy bears. This Do you is, also this look actually... forward to watching Anakin slaughter younglings? No. Uh, that actually brought a tear to my eye. But, um, but the Battle of Endor could have been so much more because where are all the rebel soldiers? We never see them. Han brings down a whole squadron, a whole unit of rebel soldiers. We see them marching at, at first when they're doing it, but then during the actual Battle of Endor, it's just the Ewoks against the Stormtroopers. And that's it. You don't see the Rebel soldiers actually fight the Empire. Now, I will say that this has my favorite space battles. I love the space battle yes. against so in, in, in the Amazing. second Death Star. Even the whole It's a Trap thing, I love it. All right? <laughs> Anything dealing with the Empire, I love in this movie. Yeah. Anytime we see the Empire, anytime mm-hmm. we see Darth mm-hmm. Vader's interaction, the climax, I, I love, I do love the climax of it with Luke and Darth Vader and almost Luke giving in to the dark side. I love all that stuff. But I feel like, again, like they didn't really know what to do with Han and Leia. So they just kind of throw him on the side mission. I feel like it was the same issue that they had with Poe in Last Jedi. They just didn't know what to do with the character. So they just kind of threw him down here and on some side quest. It really centered on, on, on Luke. Whereas at least in Empire and in A New Hope, those characters actually had a significant role to play in the story. This, this, this story is really only about Luke and Darth Vader at this point. They didn't know what to do with the rest of it. Could be argued think, that all of the original trilogies right. are just about Luke. Well, I mean, he's the main character, absolutely. So I mean, he's the main character, but the other characters contribute to the story. Here, they're not really doing anything. They blew up the shield generator. Yeah, it's a random side quest they had to do because they didn't know what else to do with them. Well, well how else were they going to blow up the Death Star? Yeah. There was I'm not writing the, the movie. Thing. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. That's all it was. What all we right. got yeah. was, was not much. So, so here's I mean, we, my criticism with the way you're coming at this. Mm-hmm. I think for me, and, and this is where Disney and I are going to have a beef if things get bad. <laughs> 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 all right. At least the first six films is the story of, in my opinion, Anakin Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It had to slim down. To him and whoever else was going to be a part of that. Like, like it had to finish on being all about Darth Vader. Oh, absolutely. And that's 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 one of the redeeming qualities of Return of the Jedi, is I really love the redemption of Darth Vader. But that's really why. I feel like it doesn't, uh, story-wise, it doesn't offer really anything beyond just the conclusion of, of the story in itself. It's not a complete film in itself, whereas every other Star Wars movie is. It's the conclusion of an epic. It doesn't have to stand alone. Mm-hmm. But as a Star Wars movie, it should. It, it, it could do that and be its own movie. It could be a conclusion and its own movie. It's like A New Hope, right? You're on Tatooine at first, and then you go to the, de- and then it's about destroying the Death Star. That's the plot, right? The reason why I could get over Force Awakens doing the same thing is because the plot wasn't to destroy a circular base. That's, that's just kind of there. 
but the plot was more character centric. The plot of Return of the Jedi, part of the driving plot was to destroy the Death Star again. That was its primary plot. I disagree with that. I think well, that's but the that plot. is what it is. I think that's the plot that, that you are meant to think. That's the plot the characters think. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things that's really beautiful about Return of the Jedi is that the movie pulls a bait and switch on you. They pull the, the wool over your eyes because you think it's all about the Death Star until you realize it's, it's about really Anakin. about Anakin. Well, yeah. I mean, when, again, that, that is part of it. So you spend the whole movie that being is confused part of on the real plot. And I think that's <laughs> but, but, but the But what you're admitting to is that the, the, the majority of the movie, the drive of the movie is let's destroy the Death Star again. Yes. Intentionally. Because right, but that's that's and the reason why that is is because George Lucas didn't know how to end it since he already used that plot element in A New Hope because that was the original ending. I think it's more about the futility of that plot because you you as the viewer come to realize towards the end of the movie that it really doesn't matter if they blow up the Death Star or not. That's not gonna make. That's not gonna stop the Empire. That's not gonna. Clearly that's hasn't. not gonna balance the force. Hmm? And that's what it comes down so, to is it's not about who the rebels can kill or what they can destroy or what assets of the Empire they can take down. Because in the end, they've already done that and they're just going to fight the Empire another day. It comes down to who's going to balance the Force. Right. And there has that's to be an the only solution. thing that can solve it. Okay, yeah. Uh, and I can agree to that. And that, that that is driving the overall epic of episodes one through six. And that is the whole... That's that's the overarching story of the whole thing with the character of Darth Vader. And I, I and I see that. That's why I say it's only an ending. It's not its own plot. It's only the ending of this of the overarching story. Now, music, I give it a ninety. Again, great John Williams music. Beautiful. Um, yeah, that that the dual scene at the end. Oh yeah, the music I mean, that is one of my favorite pieces. That's Cuts, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's iconic. And then Star Wars magic is is a ninety as well because mm -hmm. it is very much. It still has that Star Wars feel to it. But overall, when I when when I ranked all that, and again with with plot being my my weighted subject, um, and feeling that this had the weakest plot of them all, um, overall I got an eighty. So all my Star Wars movies are above eighty, eighty and above. <laughs> but yeah, Return of the Jedi got an eighty. Um, we will have this discussion again, dear reader. Yes, we, we will because will. I know your guys' number one here is not Return of the Jedi, therefore it must be in your top five. It, yeah. So my least favorite star wars is phantom menace and it kind of came down to like i was saying with the tackle clones it came down to watchability so when i want to watch all the star wars movies phantom menace is not the first one i hmm. go to mostly because i think it's a little slow and it kind of loses that grand excitement feature because it gets so caught up in being stuck on Tatooine. It is so slow. It's you are so, so right. slow. There's just like, and then once they finally get to Coruscant, you then remember, oh, they were only going to Coruscant to talk to somebody. They weren't actually going to Coruscant to do anything exciting. Oh, so then they have to go, went, like, yeah. So then they have to go all the way back to Naboo and then they have to talk to another person. There's just so much talking. Right. And mm. there's, it takes so long to get to that epic showdown, which what I really enjoy the most about Phantom Menace, where you have the lightsaber fight between Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn mm -hmm. and Darth Maul, and it's just, it's spectacular. The Duel of the Fates is probably my favorite song in all of Star Wars. Mm. But then you have the ground assault of Theed Palace. So that's exciting. That's interesting. Something's going on. It's probably the mm -hmm. least exciting one. But then you also have the air attack on the Trade Federation ships. So there's so much going on and it builds up to this beautiful finale but it took so long to get there yep. i will say though i almost bumped this up to my number two solely on qui-gon jinn hmm. Gotta love if it. grand admiral thrawn was not my favorite star wars character qui-gon jinn would be he's I a mean, good one he I is just him. i feel like he's the most wasted character in all of star wars because he is just so good and so interesting and so exciting to watch hmm. That, and that, that was a heartbreaker. When he dies, it's just, it, it gets you to the core. And it's like, <laughs> I can't come back from that. Like, you hear that, Disney? I want to hear some, I want to see some Qui-Gon in my future. Bring him on. Okay. <laughs> That's why I had to bring him on. a Star Wars there. story? Oh, yes. Star Wars story. Yes. How you get him in here. Just you know get him in how here. much money I would pay to watch that? <laughs> Okay, interesting. So Phantom Menace is your least, least favorite. So all three prequels were in your bottom five. All three prequels are in my bottom five. Not that I don't love them. I will watch them over and over again, and mm -hmm. I enjoy them so much. But they did have to... 
They did have to make okay. their way down. So there. what you feel about the Phantom Menace is is kind of how I feel about Return of the Jedi. Because well, no, for me, because Return of the Jedi feel feels very Phantom slow. Phantom Menace is truth. <laughs> oh, whoa! But, well, no, because okay, so, a lot of that. how you describe Phantom Menace is how I would describe Return of the Jedi. Is that in the sense that for me, it felt really slow. For me, it for me, Return of the Jedi is the least watchable one for me. Interesting. Um, then I still enjoy it. Yes, I still enjoy it. I enjoy all Star Wars. Uh, but that, yeah, that's just how. And it's weird though because Return of the Jedi was once upon a time my favorite Star Wars movie. Hmm. Uh, but I have... oh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say, um, we've made it through our list here. Yeah. Fulcrum, to me, the biggest surprise was that Revenge of the Sith... Ranked so low? ...made it to the bottom of this half. I, I feel like it's necessity... Well, I mean, I'll talk more about it in our yeah. next video, yeah. but it's just so essential that it almost gets a pass on some things. That one was a hard one to put down there, because there are yeah. so many things I loved about it. Yeah, you, that was my surprise for you. It did have to and my out. surprise for you, though I was surprised based off of private conversations, but just surprised on, just compared to how I look at it, was The Force Awakens. How, how low mm-hmm. you rate The Force Awakens. Um, and yeah. I'm sure the one that surprised for you guys is how I rate Return of the Jedi. It is. I just your can't. Dear readers... Much more will be said about Return of or the Jedi viewers. when we come back. Much, much more. Okay. All right. So thanks for having us on, Dark Yeah, yeah absolutely. So well, I appreciate, appreciate the conversation. I mean, I, I knew just based off pre, prior conversations that we did have some of those disagreements. Um, so I figured it'd be engaging to kind of hear it, uh, hear it talk through. Um, so that's part of the reason why I came up with the idea to kind of do this. I'm so, looking forward to doing the next segment. Yeah. So Thank yeah. You. So next uh, next video will be our our top five. Now, process of elimination. You, you all can figure out what them. are at least what what five movies there are. But you got to come back to figure out how we rank them and why. Yep. That's for sure. Yep. There will be some surprises. I can guarantee that. I think all so. All right. All right. Well, appreciate y'all being here, and may the force be with you. <laughs>